All right. Good evening. Tonight we're going to be talking about something relevant, something you can use today, and that is Ramit's household tricks. Now, yes, it's true. Last night we did discuss uh, money lessons from the 2008-2009 recession. We discussed risk. We discussed investment. We discussed the human toll of a recession. So with the benefit of range, I'd like to take it from the clouds to the street. Tonight we're going to talk about some things that have vexed many of us. I've heard from many of you, I have trouble opening up jars at home. What, what should I do, Ramit? Not one person has ever written me that, but I imagine that you have this problem. I have a can of something that I, first of all, are you really drinking Coke anymore? Who the hell drinks Coke anymore? Come on. I have a can that I need to drink, but it's not cold. It's lukewarm. What, what am I supposed to do? We'll discuss that. Um, I have a partner who loads the dishwasher incorrectly every day. What should I do? We will discuss that. Hmm. These are things that we're going to discuss today. So I'd like for everyone watching, you can bring your tips if you've got them. If you've got them, prepare to type them into the chat room. If you have questions, you can ask. I don't have many answers today except for the ones that I pre-prepared. So this is pretty much going to be a, a short episode. But let's start with uh, something that many of us may encounter in our life, which is a bottle of salsa. Now, or a pickle jar. What is it that you have trouble opening? All of us at some point or another have trouble. Look at this. Ugh, how, how do I open this? It's so tight. Here's what you don't do. You don't go, ooh. I used to do that myself until someone taught me this lesson. Wow. What is this, what is this contraption I have here? Can anyone see this? It's a simple rubber band. What am I doing here? Watch this. I'm putting it around the lip of the jar. And if it's too big, just double it up. Now watch this. Boom. Look at that. Effortless. Let me do it again in slow-mo. Wow. That's it. Put this rubber band on any jar. You will be able to instantly open it up. Teach your parents this as well. It gets harder for them as they get older to open jars like this. This provides instant traction. It's amazing. Please. This is one of my favorite tips of all. Forget about <laughs> compound interest and all that stuff. We just learned how to open any jar with no effort. It really works. He taught me that. Cass, tell him your experience uh, doing this. So I was doing what Ramit demonstrated not to do, <laughs> bending over. And then he was like, why don't you get a rubber band and put it over the top? And I was like, okay, I'll try it. Wow, game changer. The first time you did it, like the joy in yeah, your face. Yeah, that was, it was pretty cool. It was unbelievable. So I was thrilled and that's when I realized there was already magic inside of me. I just hadn't taken the time to share. <laughs> so thank, thank you to all the Fireside Chat attendees for giving me this opportunity to share what I know. I love it. Next up, we have a lukewarm drink. Now what are we supposed to do, drink it? No. Put it all over ice? Only if you want to dilute it. I need to maintain the integrity of this drink. By the way, I don't have a deal with LaCroix. Hold on, let's just talk about deals for a second. I don't have a deal with any of these companies that I ever post up here uh, like this. Um, there are only three brands that I would do a deal with anyway. In terms, So there's two Italian cashmere companies and one hotel company. Suffice it to say, those are not the type of deals that get offered to me, okay? I get offered, you know, hey, Ramit, you got a, a decent number of Instagram followers. Why don't you post 13 times? Make sure you do stories. Go ahead and send an email out three times to your list of hundreds of thousands of people. And uh, we will happily send you three full-size bags of popcorn. And I just look at them like this. And then that's when you start to realize, man, my market value is really misaligned. Like, I'm thinking Italian cashmere brands. I'm getting offered popcorn in exchange for 30,000 posts. Something's off here. 
So uh, I don't have a deal with LaCroix, uh, but we're gonna use them as an example because that's what I have around. All right, so it's lukewarm. We don't wanna dilute it. We don't know what to do. And by the way, I don't wanna wait for it to go in the fridge. That's another thing, okay? So I got 12 minutes. What should I do? Well, I'm gonna tell you what I should do. Stand by. I'm gonna get any type of container, a pot, whatever. I'm gonna fill it up with cold water, ice water. And then I'm gonna take my little friend here and submerge it. Oh, wow. Eight minutes later, you have a ice cold drink. Why? There's some reason, maybe a scientist on today's show can explain, but ice and water will cool it way faster than putting it in a freezer or a fridge. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. I'm guessing that we have no questions since this is the weirdest episode on earth. Oh, shit. Hold on. I forgot my prop for today. Okay. It's been working hard in oh, the kitchen. It's been really tough just coming up with these tips and, you know, scrubbing, uh, you know, all day long. So what have we covered so far? We've covered uh, whatever. All right. Let's get to the third and I think possibly most important thing for your relationships. Now, a lot of people, uh, including me, have discussed the problems of your partner loading the dishwasher. Let me just explain something. I grew up in my family. One of my chores was to empty the dishwasher. I know how to load a dishwasher and I know how to empty it. When I see people that completely misallocate resources, it drives me crazy. But what drives me even crazier is misallocating the space in a dishwasher. Are you kidding me, guys? You put a bowl in the area where the plates go, you could fit six plates, and now you got one bowl monopolizing all the room. It's just not fair. So there have been times where I decided, you know what, I love Cass. Babe, I love you. So for that reason, I'm just not gonna say anything. I'm gonna pick up all the things you misloaded in the dishwasher, and I'm gonna rearrange it so that we can maximize Thank you. The effectiveness of this. Thanks. All right. So this is <laughs> a happy marriage. Is this whole household thing about me? <laughs> yes. yes, yes it is. This entire thing. In fact, just give me the camera. I'm just gonna... In fact, shut the camera up. Let's just have a conversation, babe. So I discovered one of the greatest tips I've ever heard about. Actually, it's the best tip I've ever heard about dishwashers. And this was at the back of a Wall Street Journal article about three or four years ago. It, it was a question that they asked a bunch of people, what is the best tip you have? And this person shared this tip and it completely blew my mind. I was in my 30s when I learned this. So tonight, for the first time ever, we're gonna take a little field trip together. We're gonna actually walk over there. So Cass, do you wanna adjust the iPad? Sure. And we're gonna take a trip over to the dishwasher. Oh wow, we're moving. Come with me, okay, great, great. All right, so, all right, Cass, yeah, just go the a little perfect. Okay, so here we are in a typical dishwasher. And, you know, people are familiar with this. It's where you put your dirty uh, spoons and things like that. I'd like to show you. If we look closely, what do we notice here? We have spoons, forks, knives, and assorted miscellaneous stuff. The lesson I learned was put all the spoons in the same place when you're loading it. Mind blowing, because now when I pull it out, boom, all the spoons are in the same place. Please don't write me telling me that spoons start to spoon each other and they get dirty. Just, that's why I have two here, because there's gonna be more room for spoons, okay? So give yourself some options there. This seems so simple, but it has probably saved, it saved me a lot of time. And I would say there's nothing better than pulling out spoons and saying, get out of here, back into the drawer. All right, and then we have one final tip. Oh, I don't think people appreciate that as much as I did. As I was saying it, I'm like, this doesn't sound that cool. It's really cool when you do it. All right, uh, I got one last tip, which is, I, did this, uh, I did this yesterday, and then Cass was like, how'd you do that? Oh, I'm like, hold on, let me add this to my agenda. So you have a rubber band. How do you guys shoot this rubber band? Have you ever considered that since you were a kid? Well, tonight for my fourth and final household tip, I'm gonna share 
how to shoot a rubber band. I don't know if everybody does this, but Cass was surprised. So this is the way I do it. Watch. Whoa. Okay. Wow. That's Whoa. how you shoot a rubber band. Anyway, that's how I learned. So I'm just going to demonstrate for everyone watching. Maybe this is common knowledge. I actually have no idea. I put it on my pinky, on the first joint of my pinky. I put the pinky down. I go all the way around my wrist. Mm -hmm. My index finger is out. And then how do I release it? Is I lift up my pinky. This pinky uh, is going to get lifted up. And it's going to go one, two, three. Wow. And that's how you do it. Wow. All right, that concludes Ramit's household tips. Um, <laughs> I actually want to ask if anyone else has any household tips. And then I want to answer any questions, but what, I have no answers. So let's just see what people have to share. <laughs> Cass? Okay. While Cass is doing that, I'd like to make a quick comment about something that happened last night. Apparently, Cass had some lewd commenters on the live Instagram chat. And she really took relish in blocking them. Cass, you were quick. Quick yes. with the block button. Yes. And I'm the manager of this club. You, were, you really are. How did you feel when you saw those lewd, disgusting comments? Um, I felt that I had to immediately block them. Wow. Which I did. Wow. See ya. Okay. Got it. All right. Any questions or comments tonight? Or are people just trying to absorb the enormity of what has just been communicated? Okay, help solve a debate. If I open the jar, does the expiration date still apply? What? Yeah. I, that, okay, that's a really good question. Let's discuss this. Some people are very, very fanatical about expiration dates. Some people are very loose, AKA all immigrant parents. They are like, oh, this toast has mold on it. Here, just scrape it off with a knife. There you go, it's good. That's what my parents did. Cass? You're pretty relaxed about expiration dates, right? Yeah. Like today. Oh, like the bread. Tell them about the bread today. So today, uh, okay, good. So we have like multiple loaves of bread in the fridge. I don't know why. They should be in the freezer. Okay. So I was making a grilled cheese sandwich today and I look at this full loaf of bread <laughs> and it's expired one week ago. So I'm like, and I, I open it, I look at it, there's no mold and I'm like, I've gotten a little bit more risk averse in life. Okay, I'll admit that. I got more to lose. I don't really wanna be sick with food poisoning for like five days. I have a business to run. You know, I've gotten a little bit more risk averse, I'll admit it. I'm sniffing it, it smells good. So then I look at Cass and I'm like, Cass, should I use this? It's seven days old. She doesn't miss a beat, she's like, fine. And I was like, <laughs> this is why I love her. She doesn't, she's just like, whatever. Hey, yeah, it's fine. Let's go, don't be so picky. And you ate it, right? It was great. Yeah. So that was four hours ago. I don't feel sick. So. Okay. So people are asking about the dishwasher. Yeah. Um, Let's discuss. Should you uh, load the utensils face down? Face down. Oh, how come? Because you don't want to put your hand... First of all, it saves you time when you pick them up right by the handle. You don't want to have a knife sticking out up. And they're built now so they can process the dishes that are facing down. It's not like it needs to be direct exposed to water. By the way, another tip is read the instruction manual. Every dishwasher shows you exactly how the manufacturer recommends loading them. If you want to get really technical, like I bought my iron many years ago. First thing I did, I'm like, let's read that manual. Let's sit down with a nice cup of coffee, two hours clear. Let's just read that manual. There's like three people in the world who read the manual for a iron and I was one of them. It was great. So do it for your dishwasher if you really want to optimize. What is your most useful gadget at home? I have no gadgets. Does your computer count? It's eight years old. Or your iPad? I only use it when I travel. What gadgets do I have? I have this thing that holds the camera that you're holding right now. That one, It's some gimbal thing. It's cool because you can take selfies while you're walking video. Some of my videos in Earnable are stabilized using this, but it's like 30 bucks. I don't know. I'm not a big gadget guy. Okay. What do you got? By the way, as you're finding another question, uh, so here's some interesting information about Earnable. So many of you, I don't know how many of you guys joined Earnable last night. Uh, we, we had a ton of interest. So a ton of people joined. And some of you saw my tweet or my IG post last night where I said, if you're having trouble getting in, just email support. We exceeded our sales targets because so many people joined that our payment processor shut it down. 
So if you joined and you haven't yet gotten in, don't worry. If you've emailed support at I will teach you to be rich, our team will get back to you probably Monday. They're working over the weekend, but people are closed because of coronavirus. So if you joined or if you tried to join, don't worry, we will help get you in. I just want to reassure everybody of that. And for the people who are already in, congratulations. I'm seeing you in the community. Love having you. Are you a coffee lover? I drink coffee. I make it most days myself using a French press. And uh, yeah, it's good. Two, two cups a day. What's your favorite coffee from New York City? Ooh, I love Joe Coffee. Mm -hmm. I love the coffee from Friend of a Farmer. Um, those are two of my favorites. Mm -hmm. What'd you eat today? Uh, let's do one on food one of these days. Oh yeah, do you guys want to hear about food? Food, we can talk about Cass and I, what do we eat? How do we count macros and use a, you know, et cetera, mm -hmm. food scale. Okay, let's see the questions. Right. Oh, okay. We know you do the ironing and Cass does the cooking, but who does a grocery shopping and laundry? Hmm. So we're getting into like household chores now. Mm -hmm. Um, so Cass does the grocery shopping and interestingly, Cass, remember like for a long time I've been like, why don't you just do it online? But you really enjoy going to the grocery store. Yeah. But so now let, let's, let's not kind of mention any specifics about where we go. And yeah. All that stuff. But now I love to get it delivered though. <laughs> okay. So things have changed. She saw that. Efficiency. Um, yeah, so then, and then we have a, like a variety of other kind of chores that we split up and some, you know, sometimes I'm better at certain things, sometimes Cass is better at other things, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you doing a talk on fitness? That's a good idea. Ooh. And gonna... yeah, someone else said, how do you stay in shape? Okay, well, we can do something like that. And I want to give a shout out to our trainer. Yeah, Chris. Chris Colson. Uh, what's his IG? Uh, I think it's the Chris Colson. The Chris Colson, C O U L S O N. Chris trains us. He's great, and he does online training as well, even work from home stuff. So, or train from home. So, big shout out to Chris. If you guys want someone to help you stay fit, sign up with him. All right. What habits do you have at home? What? Um, no one wants to know about the tricks. Like Let's zero just... fucking questions. <laughs> I got the dishwasher one. That really, that was gratifying. Um, okay, what, okay. You know what? That's a good question. So sometimes I wish that people could follow someone else in their house for one day just to see the invisible habits that they have. And like a fit person has really profoundly different habits than someone else how they think about food, what they, what time they eat, how they cook it. It's totally different. And I've seen this now. So I wrote a post called the secret habits of successful people. Um, and you can search secret habits of successful people Ramit, and you will find a bunch of specific examples about fitness, food, money, right? A another example would be, um, successful people make t financially successful people make time to work on their money. So every month it's a thing. Um, Cass and I do a call every month. We look at our money, we have our charts, we talk about it, we make time for that. On a daily basis, um, that is sort of a culmination of uh, all the habits that we've built on a weekly, monthly, annual basis. And by the way, we have a lot of improvement. We're like constantly trying to work on improvement. I would say that uh, I usually wake up at the same time, early in general. I have a really slow leisurely morning. I scroll Instagram first thing, so that kind of breaks the rules, but that's what I like to do. I watch a TV show in the morning. I just hang out. Um, by the time it's like time to work, I'm ready. I have my coffee, I'm good to go. Uh, my commute, I have no commute because I work from home, and I start working. I have organized all this stuff. I eat the same food pretty much every day. Um, I work out at the same time. So within, the, once I have those blocks, the important things like fun time, workout time, work time, then it's like, cool, there's more flexibility around the other stuff. So, you know, discipline equals freedom is a phrase that's tossed around. I really believe in that. Household cleaning tactics, an area a day or the full house once a week? 
Uh, I'm going to defer to you, Cass. What do you think about that? I say just get it all done and do it the full house. Oh, so like once a week? Yeah. So you had a tradition growing up where your mom would get your family and you would all clean together. Yeah, every Saturday. And what, we what, would do that. what was the situation? Like your mom would put music on? Yeah, she would usually blast like Gloria Stefan. Turn the beat around. Okay. Um, or... Oh, sometimes Carlos Santana. Mm. And then we all would have chores to do. So I had to dust. I hate dusting. Yeah. And clean the toilets and bathroom. Did you use Pledge? Oh, did we? Uh, I don't remember that, but we use Windex a lot. Windex, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what, uh, and so you were, did bathrooms and did you enjoy that? Um, not at the time, but I'm glad she made me do it. Wow. Mom watching. Yeah. Nice work. Okay. <laughs> what were your chores? Uh, empty the dishwasher, uh-huh. mow the lawn, um, vacuum. Uh huh. Oh yeah, vacuum. I got yeah. I did that a lot. Yeah. So I didn't really do bathrooms much. Uh-huh. Like I can do it. I'm not scared of it or anything. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say I'm great at it. I I I don't have like my favorite spray for uh-huh. the tiles in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. I just never got like I I don't have the love for it because I wasn't. But like vacuuming. I know what vacuum, I know, you know, dishwasher, same thing. Uh So it's interesting, the habits we take growing up. And then, Mm. and then like, if you have to do it every week, you're just like, yeah, this has to get done. Like, why are we debating? It It just has to get done. Yeah. And you just, you just put the system together. Yeah. Okay. What's the best way to make coffee? I don't, I see, this is where I'm, I'm an amateur and I don't want to get into other people's business. There's a lot of experts who are really good on YouTube. I will say that. Uh, I found the math to be pretty difficult of exactly how much to put uh, when I was learning French press. So I found a really great coffee chart on Lifehacker and I started experimenting to see what taste I liked. And now when I think back to first making it, my coffee was way too strong. It was like so bitter. And I adjusted and adjusted until I got it right. And uh, I personally like French press, but one thing you did, Cass, was you bought me a coffee making class once. Mm, mm-hmm. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. So we went to uh, Joe Coffee, where they have a training facility in the city, and we learned the difference between making it drip, French press, the thing where you squeeze it that starts with a K, mm-hmm. and that was cool. So um, that's my approach, but I'm just uh, a rookie, honestly. Okay. What's one bad habit you're trying to break? Uh, That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Nothing right now. I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work on the business. I'm trying to build new habits with you. But as of right now, I don't have a bad habit that I'm actively trying to break. I do have bad habits, but they're not ones that I'm actively trying to break. (laughs) We're going to have a Twitter, Twitter time. Remember we talked about that? What's that? A uh, set time oh, for yeah, Twitter yeah. usage. Well, that was when and you Reddit. tried to get me to break that habit. And I'm like, oh, Yeah, I'm he really didn't interested. want to break it. So Cass, here's what, here's what Cass is talking about. She's, when we got here, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on. And she's like, you know, you seem a bit frazzled. You've been reading Twitter like a lot, which was true. I was reading it like eight hours a day, <laughs> maybe six. And uh, she's like, <laughs> why don't we set like 15 minutes in the morning, 15, you know, and let's just like contain it. I was like... All right. And I did it for one day, and then the next day I was like, so what's the latest news? No, remember what you said? You are like, no, I'm not going crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not crazy. And then I was like, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I'm not. <laughs> Let me just check Twitter and Reddit right now. I don't, but, like, I do read Twitter and Reddit a lot, but, you know, I still make it work. So... At least that's what I tell my kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys should be asking me this question. All right, well. Okay. Else? Uh, how do I quiet my new noisy fridge? How the hell would I? <laughs> okay, so that's another thing. Like, I think about our dads, and they're, like, so handy. And if something broke, they'd, like, take it out and fix it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, who do I call? I don't know. I don't know how to hang up a shelf. I don't know any of this stuff. Nor do I want to. So, I have no idea. <laughs> Okay, what's your favorite quarantine pastime? Oh, God. 
Twitter. <laughs> I, but I do that all the time anyway. Oh, tell them about, yes, we do have a favorite pastime. It's on Bravo. Oh, oh, okay. So we start, first of all, we have a TV for the first time in years. I haven't had a TV in um, like 15 years, but I do watch every TV show. Let, let me be clear. I have like all the stuff. I watch them on my laptop. So we have a TV and it's like, I mean, I feel like I'm the last guy to know this, but you just sit down and you're just like, click, oh my God, there's everything on this thing. So we like Bravo, we watch uh, Vanderpump Rules, we, oh, I watch Shaws of Sunset, and then we found this new one, it's an Indian show. I'm like, what Indian person would go on a reality show? What happened to you in your life? And it's called Family Karma. Get it? Karma. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, someone actually typed it in the chat. Wow. Family. One other person watched it. <laughs> oh, but, two. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we've been watching it. And for any Indian people out there, you should definitely watch it because you'll see things that you'll just be like, oh, my God. Um, I think that, anyway, it's entertaining for us. So that's what we're What watching. else do you watch on Bravo? Vanderpump, Shaw's, uh, Million Dollar Listing, both. Yeah. Okay, let me swipe through the questions. Okay. This is, by the way, I love when it's dead silence. <laughs> it's like the last thing you're ever supposed to do. <laughs> okay, what's the significance of your bracelet? I've seen you wear it for uh, years. This is called a kara, and I was raised Sikh, S-I-K-H. My dad has a turban, um, and so you would know Sikhs by their five Ks. This is one of them, their visible signs. Google it, five Ks, Sikhism. And um, Sikhism is, I mean, we, we went to Gurdwara or temple pretty much every Sunday. My dad was the principal of the Sunday school and um, my parents speak Punjabi. I understand it fluently. I can speak it enough in India to like get the taxi driver to get us where we want to go. That's, <laughs> that's about it. And so um, that's what it, you know, it's um, what it symbolizes. There's a lot of debate over it, but um, it's made of steel for strength. It's worn on your hand to remind you to do good when you're taking actions. And it's um, uh, also steel because it's simple and accessible to everyone. So there's a variety of different meanings that it has. It's also round, um, which is uh, related to life. So there's a variety of different reasons for why it's worn uh, or why people think that it is worn. But um, I would encourage anyone to kind of Google it. Take a look. What's your favorite pizza place? Why don't you tell them where we're eating tonight? No, I'm not going to tell them that. <laughs> uh, okay, in New York. So is this like just ask for me anything? Because I thought this was household tips with Rumi. Well, it's kind of related. Dinner, lunch. Uh, okay. I eat. I would say like for a classic slice, I go to Joe's on Carmine. So that, I think it's on Carmine, right? It's um, It's good. And then my f absolute favorite place is there's a place we went on Scott's Pizza Tour called Sam's Restaurant in Brooklyn. Cass did not like it. I want to go back. It reminds me of eating pizza as a kid. And then that one in Coney Island that has a long line. Mm, that yeah. one was amazing. That was really so good. Those are some of my favorites. I feel like I'm getting some real tricky questions tonight. Like, Yeah, you seem a bit stumped. How do you make coffee? Everyone has an opinion on this. I'm like, ah, I don't want to get into the coffee wars. What's your favorite pizza? Another contentious topic. Man, I feel like I'm going to get in trouble for some of these. <laughs> Do you make your bed in the morning? Ooh, we have a rule. Whoever gets out of bed last makes the bed. So that is almost always cast. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. But yes, we make the bed yeah, every, every single day. morning. That's very important. That's actually, you know what? I wouldn't necessarily do that every day i aspire to it but you mm -hmm. have really you're very disciplined about making it. yeah so what is that um i think just seeing it made makes me feel more in control of the day and i think it's a good ritual to yeah. start out the day too yeah there's a great speech by a former uh i think admiral former navy seal and he has a little book uh, called uh, first make your bed something uh -huh. like that and he's like in in the midst of war mm -hmm. we know that we can control at least making our bed mm -hmm. so let's start there and i really love that metaphor for what's going on right now yeah I, again there's so many things going on outside things are changing very quickly and getting mm -hmm. worse but we can control as much as possible our habits 
the way we load our dishwasher, mm-hmm. and our attitude day by day. Mm-hmm. So that is kind of my IWT philosophy, and I love that you live it with making your bed. I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Making our bed. It's awesome. Yeah. Do you cook together? Um, we do meal prep together. That's a recent thing because um, Cass, you know, will make a whole bunch of chicken and we want to portion it out. So we'll show you guys in a, one of these days, you know, we weigh it, we, we portion it out so that we can just open up the fridge and take out one of these things and warm it up. And so that was taking a lot of time for you, Cass. So Cass asked, you know, hey, let's do this together. Mm-hmm. And it's both of us. Let's spend the time together. So we do that. That's been good. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do one more question. Did you guys watch Tiger King? Yes! I have not watched it. Oh I don't think God. I'm going to watch it. Okay, I might do an entire episode. About <laughs> Who Tiger wants an King? entire episode on Tiger King? Well, the episode would be let's discuss the psychology of like people who are way out there. And I'll give you a few examples. We have Tiger King, that's one. We have some people who email me demanding my stuff should be free. And I'm like, um, 98% of my stuff is free, including these live videos every single night. Yeah, but you need to give away more. I'm like, what, have you used anything of my, no, no. But you really should give away these things for free. It's wrong of you. You're ethically misguided. I'm like, let's do an episode about you. So there's a lot, I'd like to consider that, but we could just make it about Tiger King. <laughs> Yeah, just talk about Tiger King. People are like, I don't want to hear all these weird rants. Just keep it to Tiger King and let's wrap it up. <laughs> all right, enough questions. We got to eat. Listen, thank you for coming. Last night we talked about money lessons from the Great Recession. Today we're talking about household tips. If you've learned anything, you've learned this. You've learned that your mom <laughs> or dad should never struggle opening a jar of pickles or salsa. Nor should you. Use a rubber band. Turn it around. Get that traction. Open it up. You'll thank me. And if you do it, please send me a picture of you oh, yeah. holding up a pickle jar <laughs> with a big smile and a rubber band. Please. This will be my greatest testimonials ever. Okay? Oh, I made $50,000 using Earnable 500. No, forget that. Let's get this pickle salsa jar. Second, never settle for a lukewarm can. <laughs> Always put it in the ice water. Um, third, load the dishwasher. If you don't, your marriage is at risk. Load it correctly. Okay? And then fourth... Oh, yeah, do show them again. What's up? Do it towards here, towards No, then. no, no, I'm not going to do that. It's dangerous. Okay. <laughs> it's dangerous. I'll see you tomorrow night and on all the rest of these fireside chats. Go to YouTube or whatever. All right, bye.